might be a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a fat. Oh hee haw. <laughs> I guess he mad. He's like, hell with them buoys. They they catch fish. I ain't catching nothing. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Turner Fishing. This is Stephen Turner. So if there's one thing I know is across the world on probably 95, 98 percent of lakes, you've got bridges. And oh boy, let me tell you something. If it's a Turner thing, it's bridges. My daddy is probably the biggest expert on bridge fishing, you know, even before live scope and even more now that he has live scope. I mean, we've got so many bridges, we got them named by the season of the year. You know, oh, it's January. Oh man, we're gonna go fish this bridge right here and we're gonna blow them up. So, today's video i kind of just want to go over a bridge and i'm going to do commentary over cast to catch on about you know five or six catches we ended up limiting it out in two hours and i mean that's pretty fast for november so uh we're going to go over the gear setup everything i'm going to go over what the bridge and what you should be looking for with or without live scope we didn't even use live scope in this video so that, that just goes to show you, you know, I mean, if you know the bridge, it don't take much to catch you some slab crappy. Oh. So, bridges. I mean, what can I say? Like I said at the beginning of the video, you know, my daddy's notorious for catching fish on bridges, you know, 98% of the year we have bridges that we can target that have fish on it. But honestly, with the induction of live scope and everything, there are fish on bridges 100% of the time. Take that live scope. You shine that bad boy. Woo! Man, there's probably about 100 of them fish up under there. And not a single one of them going to bite. Yeah, there's going to be loads and loads of days like that. You've got to be there at the right time. And sucks to say they can't invent something that tells you when them fish gonna bite. I mean, yeah, there's the farmer's almanac and all of that, but honestly, they're gonna bite when they're gonna want bite. And that's just how it is, guys. I'm gonna pop up this picture right here. So we're gonna we're just gonna dive right into this. This bridge right here. You've got to, like, when you visually see a bridge, you know, you see the, the pylons, you see what's above the pylons, you see all of that, but do you, you see what's under the water? Like, yes, you can take your side scan and go see what's under the water, and that's the number one way to do it, or, you know, take your live scope and do it. Either way, whichever one you got. Now, if you don't have electronics, you could take... You know, a 1 16th ounce jig head tie it on, throw it under or around the bridge, and just let it go to the bottom and feel for what's there. And that's how you can kind of figure out what is all there. And once you figure out what's there, then you can fish it effectively. Now, you take the bridge that we're looking at right now, it's got a pylon. Which, I mean, they, they, probably, they might be called something else, but I call them a pylon. You've got one on the left, and you got one on the right. You've got a middle section. Now, what that tells me is there's going to be another, what I call, a ledge under it. Now, most bridges with cement pylons have these ledges. The ones with the metal uh, rafters and stuff, they normally don't have them, but some do. See, now, this bridge especially, it goes down in the water till about eight feet when the water is full pool then there's a what i call a ledge now that eight feet from the top of the water column to the bottom is good in the spring and early summertime now once the water starts cooling off or the or you're in uh the end of summer they're gonna want the deeper part of this bridge which is off that ledge and that's how we were catching them 
uh, the day in November. I would throw it up. Here, here's another image right where I want my cast to go. And I knew that the, the fish were stacked on the edge of the ledge closer to the deeper water. Now, if I could get my jig to go off that edge of the ledge, I was going to get bit. Now, you can take this and you can go all the way around the world, you know, fishing bridges. If you can figure out the structure of the bridge and all that, you can catch a limit in no time if you're there at the right time. We ended up going late that day, which was yesterday. We ended up going late yesterday. We got there about 9.30 in the morning, which is... With daylight saving time, that's four hours after daylight. No, three, yeah, three and a half hours after daylight, yeah. So it was three and a half hours after daylight. And when we pulled up, literally, it took us about three casts, and we were in the zone, and it was just on. Now, you can tell at the first of the video where I put the guy driving off, he, uh, he fished the pillars behind us, never got a bite. He got mad at us because we were, man, we were just cutting up, pulling in fish. And we actually went behind him and caught more. So, is it our jigs or is it just our expertise, I guess? So, now I'm going to break down fish catching on bridges real quick. Not real quick. I mean, this is going to be kind of in depth. I'm going to try to talk you through the whole cast. What's in my mind and everything. But first off, we got to talk about gear. The jig I was using today is a little minnow in dirty green. Don't know if it's released yet or not on the website. If I put it up there, I do. If not, Daddy was using the Cracky Man Green. Cracky Man Green is good all year round. Y'all know that. So as for a rod and reel setup, this is my honest favorite setup. I'm not sponsored by any rod company as of yet. And this B&M slab, slab tail crappy rod has been my favorite for about three or four years now. This thing comes in at a whopping four feet, 10 inches. Like I'm a six, I'm six, four guys. Like I'm, I'm not short, but man, I love this rod and I got it paired up. What I think. That is a quantum. I mean, this is an old quantum. The drag don't even work on it. Don't have, I ain't got no real sponsor, and you know I don't make a lot of money, so this is just what I got. And I've been using these for years. They still work exceptionally well. Now the money is right here, guys. Using dirty green with a one sixty-four ounce jig head. 164. Now, what does that mean, guys? Y'all watched my videos before, and if you haven't, there's plenty of them out down there. Go, go hit that subscribe button. You're missing out. That 164 ounce jig head is going to allow me to stay in the strike zone longer. If you're not out there targeting individual fish with live scope on these bridges, if you're not, if you're out there casting. You know, you're out there side scanning, figuring out where the fish are. You want a smaller jig head to go longer. You know, if, you, if I've got a 1 ounce jig head on, when I throw it out there, this is only going to take, you know, a couple seconds. It's going to be all the way at 8 foot and hitting the, the ledge. The way I do it in this video is I'm going to throw past the ledge. That 164 is just going to... Chomp. I mean, it ain't, it ain't every cast, but when you catch 40 fish off two bridge pylons in under two hours, I'd say it's doing pretty good. So let's, let's go break down these casts for you. Hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, please hit that thumbs up button for me. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm so I can afford to do all this. All right, so we're going to make our first cast right here. We know that the fish are on the ledge. The ledge is about eight foot down, so we're gonna cast way past it, let it come down. 
so that's what we're doing right now is basically just waiting for the 164 to get into the strike zone now as the jig's falling you'll start to see me bump it up and down that's just a to check if one grabbed it and i didn't feel it and b to give the jig action so just patiently waiting on it to go down until where i feel it's at the strike zone and you see that line jump you set the hook A good one on the Damn, dirty bro. green. Oh. All right, same cast past the pillar. No one is going to come down to the ledge. Gonna let it go down. Now, you see, I'm always holding my finger on the line. That gives me the most sensitivity that you can ask for. That way, if you breathe on it, I'm going to get it. So right now, it should be about in the, in the zone I want it to be. So I'll start working it with the tip of my rod. And there he is. It don't take much to catch fish on these bridges, as long as you know where they're at. He will fight him better than the other one. <laughs> I, I still a little, little hee haw though. Catch him. About time you get some. Beer. I don't know. You've been putting it on me for about a month. Huh? You've been putting it on me for about a month. <laughs> you getting used to it again? Yeah. <laughs> That's a damn big one over here today. That's a damn good one. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice one. Nice, nice. For four. He was a good one too. He just swings up and got it. Yeah, I'll look good at that line, throw it. <laughs> and then hold it tight and wound it back up. Yeah, that was a good fish. That one was swimming with it too. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> yeah. He came back for it. Or another one got it one. Fish over there scared me. Huh? The fish that jumped scared me. Because <laughs> as soon as I hit this fish, it jumped. <laughs> Yeah, he mad. He's like, hell with them buoys. They where they catch fish. I ain't catching nothing. I guarantee you, we can go over and catch the hell out of them. 
Oh, another a double up. Double. Yeah. <laughs> got one limit. Pick it up and let it fall for a second. 